current president of the World Federation, and I am very happy to welcome you all here this morning, and thank you for coming. Um, we have uh, two very exciting, very attractive bid presentations to, to, to hear today, and the opportunity to ask questions of both of the, the bidding committees, so uh, please get ready uh, with any of your queries after the two presentations. Uh, the first presentation will uh, come from, I, I just love the idea of this name, the Alpine Consortium. Um, <laughs> I just think that's very neat and, and somewhat novel for the Federation. Um, this is being led by uh, our, our colleagues in Switzerland, um, uh, joined uh, as well by um, uh, associations in Italy and, and France, yes. Um, and the second presentation uh, will be uh, coming from our colleagues on the uh, association in Quebec, uh, presenting their bid to bring the conference to Montreal in 2019. And I should mention that the Alpine Consortium uh, would bring the conference to Lausanne in Switzerland and some of the surrounding territories. Um, so it should be uh, uh, some very interesting stuff. Now, are we going to do the, uh, I'm sorry, but the format, uh, Damien, you can tell me, is, are we going to do Q&A with each uh, immediately following the presentations, or will there be a large Q&A afterwards? So we'll have Q&A after each presentation. Okay, thanks very much. So um, with that, I don't want to take up any more uh, of your time, and let's uh, just uh, get right into this. So uh, if I can, I'll welcome uh, Olivier to the podium to make the uh, first presentation. Actually, I'm not alone. We're nine. Oh, wow, nine of you. All right, That's great. Well. <laughs> so. Okay, so here we go. Dear colleagues, uh, dear members of the board of the World Federation Science Journalists, I'm really happy to be here today to present you the, the bit of Lausanne as the possible next host city for the World Conference of Science Journalists in 2019. As you see, I'm, I'm not alone. We're here quite a bunch of people, especially our colleagues from France and Italy, who actually organized the, the bid with us today. Um, this is a complex task. This hasn't been always an easy task, but I think organizing a conference, especially with three associations, is uh, the kind of collaboration we would like to put in place between our associations and uh, to promote, actually, also amongst the, the World Federation. To work together, we quickly set up um, a theme, a motto for the, the conference, and it goes reaching new heights for science journalism. And actually to motivate ourselves and also to share the enthusiasm and, um, well, to communicate it to all of you, we, were, we have been looking for a, a, a project that we could actually uh, share and, and uh, uh, you know, to make it even more concrete for us. And this is actually what we found. And now it's not working. Yes. It all started with a challenge. We were looking for a symbolic action to illustrate our project bringing together the World Conference of Science Journalists in Lausanne, Switzerland in 2019, an event for which our three associations of science journalists from Switzerland, France, and Italy joined their ideas and forces. Then the challenge came. Let's go to the exact point where the borders of our three countries meet. Well, this point happens to be the summit of Mont Dolon, 12,543 feet high, in the Alps. So we carefully planned this long haul journey. Like the organization of the conference, we knew the trek would need a collaborative effort. 
climbing together, we would exchange ideas about the right path to follow. Climbing together, we would find the right tools to use and the best decisions to take. We could share our enthusiasm and goodwill with all of you, our colleagues across the world. We shared a single goal, reaching new heights together both on the mountain and in science journalism. Arriving at the summit, just as for this next world conference, we step outside the context of our daily routines. We see farther in the open sky and take time to think differently. Let's, Let's reach new heights together. It's quite clear that it was a symbol of the idea of collaborating and exchanging ideas. I am uh, Fabio Turone. I'm the president of the Science Writers in Italy uh, that has been contributing to this joint effort. Uh, I wanted to let you know that we are also, we have been working with other um, people from other countries. We have a project that involves the Balkan Network for Science Journalists and we're trying to do something to uh, work with them to feel that we are all working on the same um, goals. And we also have, we are planning a project aimed at the French speaking countries involving uh, not only France and Canada, but also Africa and other countries of the world that use French as their main language. Uh, on top of that, another uh, interest that we focus on is finding sources for helping people from uh, uh, with financial difficulties or young students to attend the next world conference. So we already secured the part of the budget for uh, bursaries to bring them. So our goal is to make the world conference of science journalists 2019 in Lausanne if we manage to uh, organize it, a really global exchange of ideas. And uh, such an exchange has to be well prepared and take into account the most pressing challenges journalism is facing. My name is Yves Yama. I'm a vice president of the French Association of Science Journalists. So, um, let me say that we live in times which call for a strong and independent science journalism. We're currently witnessing serious attacks against science. Some come from political powers, not least in this country. Others come from corporate powers, sometimes allied to academic powers, as has been recently shown by the Sugar Documents or the Monsanto Papers. And we believe that the need to speak truth to power also applies to science journalism. And we will see that the tools and practices to achieve that goal will get discussed in Lausanne, of course, among all the other things. So we're planning to split our conference into four overarching themes that you see here. Skills and tools will be about the practical questions of the journalistic craft, such as new technologies, new formats, ways to pitch, etc. A hands-on practical approach will dominate this theme. Identity and values will discuss our role, our handling of pressures, our ethics, ways to create transborder cooperations, etc. Science and beyond will put the spotlight on new scientific developments, from gene editing to robotics, renewables, neuroscience, but it will also look at the backstage of science, uh, at policy, at funding, and difficult issues will not be spared from fraud to corporate influence to gender bias, etc. 
And finally, fun and entertainment will look at new imaginative ways to inform and entertain at the same time. Science can be sung, it can be made into games, it can be made into parody. There is a lot of creativity that we want to bring out here. So, uh, as you will say, uh, as, will you, uh, as you will see, the COP program will, uh, will take place during uh, three days. Uh, from uh, July 2 to uh, July 4, and, um, and uh, well, um, my name is Viviane Thivon. I'm a president of the French Association. And um, what we want to do during this conference is to try to promote new format, new uh, way to, uh, to make our session. So we are thinking about moving debates about uh, uh, Kino, which is a new way to uh, make some interaction between uh, journalists and the movie makers, House of Commons and them, on, uh, and conversation with. Uh, that said, uh, we are also thinking about a new um, long-term project, uh, which, uh, be which become uh, before uh, the, the conference and last after. And uh, for the moment, we have uh, three main projects. The first one is a kind of twinning between Balkan and the European uh, Union journalists uh, with a final contest. Uh, we have a program also with a struggle with politics, uh, which aim uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to follow the, the scientists who uh, try to in get involved in politics. And uh, we also have um, a kind of a movie masterclass uh, with a, a video about We Stand for Science Journalism. Uh, if you are interested in taking part of this, uh, in, in this project, especially the, uh, the struggle with politics, please check our big book on, big, uh, big book on the website. Um, come to the presentation at the booth uh, on the Sweet Sign Lodge in the Buena UF Bar uh, Forum. Thank you. And as this bid is, is uh, actually at attracting quite a lot of attention, we are happy to, to say that we will have also four pre-event workshops. You can see them here. We'll have a special project on the science journalism in, in the French-speaking region. We'll have a full day about science documentaries organized in collaboration with the European Broadcasting Union. And we'll have a project with two uh, associations, sister associations. One is the Balkan Network of Science Journalism. They will try to have their Balkan School of Science Journalism in Lausanne, just before the, the World Conference. And the other one is the ABSW, so the Association of British Science Writers, who have their yearly, or I think it's every two years, um, uh, summer school, one day summer school. And the idea here is to link the two <coughs> events so that people can actually go to both the World Conference and the event in, in London. So for this role in society, we strongly believe in, and it's the reason the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, EPFL for short, is very happy to support WCSJ19. My name is Pierre Van der Gant. I'm the Vice President for Education at EPFL, but we're not alone in supporting this project. There are many institutions in Switzerland, in Italy, and France who also take part, as you see. EPFL and its close neighbors, the University of Lausanne, we share a very vibrant, actually quite nice campus right on the shores of Lake Geneva, a beautiful place to study and visit. It's also not an isolated campus, I want to mention. The whole Lemanic region, from Geneva to Lausanne, hosts a lot of very strong scientific institutions that have activities ranging from physics to biotech. And all these institutions are tightly knit by research partnerships. This also adds up to an impressive ecosystem of high-tech companies that have established their operations in the region. And everything is within a 14-minute ride on the famously accurate Swiss transportation system. So we believe this is the ideal place to discuss science journalism. EPFL itself, that beautiful campus, is a young and modern research university hosting 11,000 students, 20% of them PhD students. One of the specificities of EPFL is a commitment to innovation. The innovation park, which is at the uh, right top of the campus over there, is set up right on campus and it hosts a mix of startup companies large and small corporations uh, that attract the strongest share of venture cap investment in Switzerland. 
EPFL also wants to innovate in the way we do science. And for instance, open science is the number one priority uh, of our new president. We want science to be open. We want science to have a strong societal outreach to play its role in society. And for that, we are convinced that we need a strong, healthy, and yes, indeed, sometimes critical science journalism. I'm very close by um, Lausanne, is Geneva, um, a truly international city with uh, big international organizations uh, with scientific goals about health, um, climate, and also physics. I'm Arnaud Marcelet from CERN, I'm heading media relations. Uh, CERN is uh, where you can find the Large Hadron Collider, antimatter facilities, and we we also believe that uh, uh, it's very important to support science journalism. So we are very glad to, to be part of uh, this initiative, which uh, also is very close to how CERN was, was built, bringing together several nations together to, to achieve big things. So we think that there is this, this spirit also in this bid, and, and it's why we support it. So, of course, we will be glad to open the lab for the journalists coming. Uh, 2019 is, is a big opportunity because the LHC will be in shutdown mode uh, for maintenance. So it means that we will be able to bring uh, anyone who wants to visit and see the big things we have. And, and we know that there is a wide effect that is always very important to uh, people who covered it, but maybe not, not everyone has seen. In addition, there is a very strong scientific uh, program that, that is set up for, for this uh, conference uh, with field trips around. Um, there is a big focus on mountain science, from ice, climate, uh, to even nuclear uh, research underground. Uh, so many other opportunities for stories for journalists coming to the conference. And in addition, not so far, uh, in France, in Italy, uh, in Switzerland, of course, uh, there will be many other opportunities uh, to go to, so you see here ESRF, for instance, uh, in Grenoble. Uh, we think also about underground lab in Italy, uh, under the Grand Sasso Mountain, where you can find dark matter experiments. Uh, there will be many opportunities uh, for stories. And last but not least, during the conference itself, every, uh, every lunch time will be dedicated to meeting with scientists, uh, to visiting labs, uh, so journalists will have the opportunity to have uh, a light lunch uh, discussing, again, stories with, uh, with scientists. So for the time of the conference, you know that uh, Lausanne will be the venue city for you. And you know that Lausanne is in the heart of, uh, of Europe. It's uh, an easy access because it's next to Geneva Airport. At an average of an hour and a half from all the major hubs you had in Europe, it's uh, London, Paris, Amsterdam, the airport will take a maximum of 40 minutes to the city center or to the venue place where you can go directly. It's easy, you just drop your luggage at the hotel, the hotel will offer you a free transportation card that will enable you to go everywhere. We say hotel, you have 60 hotels, 4,000 rooms in Lausanne, so plenty of space, lots of headquarters. You have stunning views, you can be surprised by the venue city, the region and its environment. Lausanne is the official Olympic capital, you have also 60 sports, the Olympic Museum that will be the venue for the welcome reception also, it's a great place for it. Lausanne is a small, big city, like we said. It's plain of surprise. It's high culinary standards in a region famous for its wine. And I can tell you, I live in the region and then wine starts to be an addiction. So watch out if you guys come in, I can tell you that. I share with you the best wine caves also if you want. And you will understand how beautiful it is with the last event and will for you at the Lausanne Wine Yard. We'll work closely together with the venue center, the Swiss Tech Collection Center, and you will hear about it now.
Good afternoon. My name is Julianne Jammers, and I'm the director of the Swiss Tech Convention Center that's located um, on the EPFL campus. We are really looking forward to hosting the World Conference of Science Journalists in, in um, 2019. The Swiss Tech stands really above other convention centers thanks to its flexible um, size and, and the flexibility in the conference rooms and, and capacity. The building architecture allows three auditoriums to merge into one or into two. The number of seats in each room can also be varied in just a matter of minutes. The modularity is based on two mechanisms, a system of sliding walls and the gala venue technology that's hidden in the floor automates the rotation of the seats from below to above the con conference room floor. And we are the only conference center located directly on the campus of a world-recognized technical university. Thanks to this, you will find plenty to write about, not just outside, but also inside the conference center. The Swiss Tech itself is a showcase of some of the top research being done on campus, incorporating reno renewable energies in the most efficient way possible. Water from Lake Geneva and geothermal, pil geothermal pillars support the structure of the building and are used for heating and cooling. And Gretzel cells, Gretzel photovoltaic panels, um, which are on the western facade of the building, simultaneously produce electricity, but they also prevent the inside of the center from overheating. So both the technology, both of these technologies actually come from the EPFL um, labs. You'll appreciate natural light throughout the entire um, uh, building, thanks to the architectural design. Thus, our facility really was built with your kind of meeting in mind, and we hope to see you in July 2019. Thank you. Yes, all that we heard so far, it underlines strong support our conference project already enjoys. My name is Stefan Pra. I am a member of the Swiss Association of Science Journalists, and I call it this bit. Uh, support and sponsoring indeed are very important things uh, for staging such a big event. However, uh, at the same time, it's a delicate subject when journalistic integrity and independence are concerned. That's the reason why we established that strictly no sponsor has any say on the core program that was presented to you just now. The core program will be set up by science journalists for science journalists. Um, that said, we are very grateful for the generous support we received so far and for the support already pledged. Thanks to that, we already have secured uh, nearly half of our budget, which stands at the moment at 2 million Swiss francs. That's quite the same amount in US dollars. And at this point, I want to thank our uh, partners and sponsors. I want to thank our academic partners. That's the CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. That's the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne. And these are the universities of Lausanne and Geneva. Then I want to thank our bidding sponsors. They enabled the creation of this bid. I want to thank our first platinum sponsor, the Fondation Bertarelli in Geneva. And I want to thank our Kickstart sponsors. Our, kick our Kickstart sponsors uh, are organizations from all over Europe as well, the European organizations and national organizations in media, science, and from governments that will support us from the very moment we eventually win this bid. Of course, I'm, I'm sure you know it, one of the most interesting aspects of all these conferences like this one or hopefully the next one in, in Lausanne is actually meeting each other, networking amongst us. And for that we have set a full range of, of activities. The first day the opening ceremony at the Swiss Tech, on the second day um, the cocktail, uh, welcoming cocktail at the Olympic Museum. You might know that Lausanne is the official uh, Olympic capital. Uh, then next, the Gala Dinner, also at the Swiss Tech with this technology, Gala System technology that allows to 
actually transform the auditorium into a flat room so we can uh, install the, the, the tables. And on the very next day, the farewell dinner, and for that, we rent a full village called Grand Vaux. It's in the world, uh, UNESCO World Heritage on the lakeshore, where you will be able to go into the cave, test the wines, and have some good food while uh, chatting to, to each other. So, uh, and then, oh, I almost forgot, we would like to have also in the center, in the heart of the city of Lausanne, a social hub where people will be able, uh, during the day, to go and work, and during the evening to have a drink or listen to some music or, uh, or some artistic science arts presentation. With this word of friendship and uh, collaborative spirit, uh, I'm sure that we can make a great world conference in, uh, in Lausanne 2019 uh, with this goal of reaching new heights in science journalism. I would like to warmly thank two sponsors here uh, especially one is Present Switzerland, that's the entity of the Swiss government devoted to promote the image of Switzerland abroad because they helped us tremendously in putting this video, this mountain video that you saw just before. And the other major sponsor uh, I would like to, to thank is uh, SwissNet San Francisco. That's the hub we have here to connect uh, scientists from Switzerland and abroad um, uh, here in San Francisco because they helped us to organize the booth. So if you have time, please do come to our booth at the exhibition space. Uh, there are many uh, things to be uh, to happen there, so really thank you to both those uh, two sponsors. And finally, if you want to know more, please go on our website. We already have a website installed with many information, and there'll be plenty more coming. And finally, I just have one final wish: is to see you all in Lausanne in 2019. Thank you very much for your attention. Do we have a microphone in the room? I can certainly act as runner and uh, let's uh, try to keep it when we can. Oh, well, let's, let's do some questions okay. answered. I think it might be easy and then we'll do, do the second uh, group. Uh, but I think we should keep it to maybe uh, five uh, minutes or so just so that the, the next uh, group has the, the full time. So um, let me start with. Hi, I'm Mandy Smallhorn of the African Federation of Science Journalists. Can you maybe elaborate a little bit on, on what you're talking about in terms of working with the Francophone co countries? What are you envisaging? So it started with a meeting that I had with um, actually one person that is here. I'm looking for him, Julien. Where are you, Julien? <laughs> He's the head of press for CNRS, and we're talking what we could do to foster um, science journalism, and then we ended up saying, okay, let's do something about French-speaking science journalism, because, I mean, Lausanne is a French-speaking country, so what the idea is to have this pre-event workshop, so a full day dedicated to, uh, to French-speaking journalism with one ID. You know that, Mandy, uh, in the English-speaking world, um, you're connected, right? If, if you want to write for Nature, for New Scientists, or for whatever uh, publication in the US, you can just write them and, and so on, and you have connections. These connections actually lack in the French-speaking world. Um, for example, during the crisis in uh, Ebola crisis uh, a few few, a few years ago, um, as a, a responsible for a section in science journalism in my newspaper, I I could expect from a, a, a French-speaking journalist in Africa to to be in connection with us, and we we couldn't find we okay we didn't look very deeply, of course, but if such a, a kind of network of French-speaking journalists would exist, I'm sure it would help a lot. So this idea of uh, having this pre-event workshop is based on this, is to foster a sense of journalism in the French-speaking countries, bringing a lot of, hopefully, a lot of uh, French-speaking African colleagues also in Lausanne, and trying to create some network among, uh, amongst French-speaking uh, science journalists. Thank you, Curtis. <clears throat> Congratulations on a fantastic bid, and particularly your mountain climbing video, which is a, a great metaphor for, for us all. Um, although it does make it more difficult for associations in China, Tibet, and Nepal to top that, should they wish to put together a joint bid. But, but anyway, um, my question is, 
Nietzsche mentioned um, critical, independent, strong journalism. How is that going to be reflected in the programme? And also, I've got a slight concern that it's great that all of you have got together, but is, is, there, is there a danger that there's not going to be a singular vision, that perhaps too many cooks will spoil the broth and it's a programme arranged by committee? Um, so, uh, about independence and critical journalism. So first of all, I, I want to say that we put an emphasis on this, but we know that science journalism is diverse and there has to be room for everybody. So um, there will also be uh, sessions where we talk about the best way to explain science and uh, the things of the trade. However, uh, we do think that it's important uh, to be critical, and I think one of the simple ways to do that is uh, to give uh, the floor to people who have led uh, scientific investigations, um, who have actually had successes in this. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to give names, but uh, lots of the sort of stars of science journalism that we have right now are more people who will explain beautiful things about the microbiome or about a world of viruses. Um, we would like some of these new stars who will maybe appear in the future to be people who have uh, led really tough investigations and brought out some interesting facts. Uh, and we know we have them in every country. Concerning the diversity, well, we will build a program committee um, in any program committee, there are people with different sen sensitivities. We're going to try and respect everyone. But uh, that being said, we, we put this idea of strong independent journalism out front because uh, we want in this committee people who agree with this idea. Thank you very much. My name is Esther Nakazi. I'm a journalist from Uganda. It's just a point of information. Um, under the World Federation of Science Journalists, which was created by John Mark Sitted there, we do have science, we do have science journalism, um, uh, what do I call it? We do have, uh, we have the Uganda Science Journalists Association. So we have science journalist associations in Africa. So if you, if you want to get in touch with the French-speaking African journalists associations, I would be happy to send you some contacts that I know. I am from Uganda, but I know that they are there in, in, in West Africa. Thank you. Thank you. I think this will be very useful for this pre-event workshop in, in French-speaking science journalism.